everyone, I'm Sarah of Birch Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to crochet the Grand Canyon Scarf, which you can see here in front of you in the photo. There's also many other photos on richtexturescrochet.com. This is my sample one here that you can kind of see the tail end, just to give you an idea of the texture that is seen in this scarf. Uh, it's created with uh, front and back post double crochet stitches that gives it this woven or uh, sometimes people call it a twisted stitch effect and then it has a fringe here on the end uh, and the fringe on this scarf is optional. I've worked this scarf in two colors in my sample you can see it in the color antler as well as a gray heather. For this project I used four balls of this Woolies yarn by Lion Brand. It's a worsted weight yarn. There's about 200 yards per ball. So you're going to need uh, 400 yards in each color for this scarf. Uh, and again, you'll need two colors for it. The scarf measures approximately seven by 60 inches laid flat. And later on in the video, I'll give you some instructions on how to change the size if you'd like. This uh, written crochet pattern is free on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com and the direct link is down in the description of this video along with uh, links for each of the items that you're going to need including your worsted weight yarn and a 5 millimeter crochet hook. So thank you so much for joining me while you're here. I invite you to take a look around. This scarf was actually designed to go along with the Grand Canyon beanie which is another free crochet pattern that you'll find here. And uh, there's lots of others to check out. Today our scarf pattern is worked in rows. So we're going to start by, with our color A, I'm going to start with this gray heather color. So with your color A, make your slip knot. And then start by making a foundation chain. Your foundation chain uh, today will be 31 stitches. If you would like to change the size of your scarf, like change how wide it is, you're going to need an even number of stitches plus three more for your foundation chain. So today, uh, if you're going to do the same dimensions, you can go ahead and chain 31 chains. There's 10, 20, and 31. Once you have the desired number of chains, you're going to begin by row one by working a double crochet into the fourth chain from your hook. So count in one, two, three, four, and into that fourth chain, work one double crochet. The chain three at the beginning does count as a stitch. You're then going to go ahead and double crochet into each chain all the way across. When you come to the end of this row, you can chain two and turn your work. For row two, you've chained two and you've turned your work. You're now going to begin by working a double crochet into that first stitch, followed by a back post double crochet into the next stitch. To work your back post double crochet you can yarn over, insert your hook, um, bring your hook in front back of your work, insert your hook from the back through to the front, around the post of that next stitch, out through the back again, yarn over and drop a loop, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. That's your back post double crochet. You're then going to work a front post double crochet around your next stitch. To work a front post double crochet, yarn over, bring your hook in front of your work, insert your hook from the front through to the back, out through the front again, yarn over, draw up a loop, 
yarn over and pull through two and yarn over and pull through two that's your front post double crochet you're then going to repeat that all the way across back post double crochet around the post of the next stitch followed by a front post double crochet around the next repeat it all the way across and then when you come to your final stitch which is your starting chain three you're simply going to work a double crochet stitch into the top of that starting chain at the end of row two you can chain two and turn your work now for the next, uh, until your work from the beginning measures 10 inches, you're simply going to repeat row 2. So double crochet into that first stitch, then back post double crochet in the next stitch, followed by a front post double crochet into the next. Repeat that across, back post, double crochet, followed by a front post double crochet all the way across and then double crochet in the top of that first stitch. Your chain two does not count as a stitch. So you're always just working your double crochet into the top of the last double crochet stitch. So you're going to go ahead, continue with color A until your work from the beginning measures approximately 10 inches. And then you're going to want in your final stitch to switch to your color B. Uh, so go ahead, work 10 inches in your color A, simply repeating row two over and over again. And uh, then when you get to that final stitch, meet me back here and I'll show you how I like to change color in the middle of a project. So now I'm going to pretend that I have worked uh, 10 inches. You will have worked 10 inches, so from the beginning, 10 inches in your color A. Then when you come to your final stitch, you're going to want to switch to your color B. To do that, you're going to yarn over, insert your hook into the top of that final stitch. We're just working a double crochet. You're working in your color A, yarn over and draw up a loop yarn over and pull it through two loops. You can then drop your color A, pick up your color B and place it on your hook and then pull it through to complete the stitch. That is going to uh, make it, make uh, your color B ready on your hook so that you can chain two in your color B and now turn your work. At this time, you can go and uh, fasten off that color A and weave in your ends. For the next part of the scarf, you're again simply going to repeat your row two again. Uh, so double crochet into that first stitch using your new color B, followed by a back post double crochet in the next stitch front post double crochet in the next. So repeat that row two in your color B until your work uh, again from the start of the color B section measures approximately 10 inches. You're going to continue to repeat that process. So working row, repeating row two in each color until you've worked about 10 inches in each color and you want to have uh, three blocks in each color. So you'll have 10 inches of color A, 10 inches of color B, 10 more inches of color A, then B, and so forth. Once uh, you're finished, you can then fasten off, weave in your ends, and if you would like, add a fringe, which I'm going to show you how I like to add the fringes to my scarves in just a moment. Okay, so I've just finished off my little sample here now. Uh, yours is going to be much longer. It should measure about 60 inches uh, from 
one end to the other. I just want to show you quickly how to work the fringe on your scarf. What I've done is I've just taken lengths, they're about 10 inches long, of uh, the color that uh, you find on each end. So I'm just going to use my kind of pinky color here. And you're going to take it, I cut four pieces per tassel. Then starting with my first stitch, just push the yarn through that first stitch and fold it over until the two ends meet. So I'm just folding it over in half. And then all I do to make my fringes for my scarves is take it and simply tie a knot. And I push that knot up to the base of my scarf. And I find that it gives it a nice uh, tight fringe. There are other ways of making little tassels, but these aren't gonna come undone as you're wearing it. Uh, or washing your scarf. So uh, continue to do that. I like to work it in every second stitch. So I skip one stitch in between. And you're going to continue working that all the way across until your fringe looks something like this. You can then take your scissors and then trim off your fringe all the way across until all of the little ends are the same length. And that's all there is to making your Grand Canyon scarf. So thank you so much for joining me. And uh, once again, I invite you to subscribe if you happen to make this scarf and share it on social media. Please feel free to tag me. I love to see all your finished projects. So until then, until next time, and uh, happy crocheting. And uh, I'll see you again soon. Bye.